Welcome everyone to another episode of Elevate. I'm really excited that you are tuned in. My name is Blessed Ivan Muhumuzamoti. I'm really, really excited to bring you the word today that I believe is going to change your life radically. It's going to change your life super, super radically. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I invite you to share the link, invite your friends. It's going to be a swell time together. Um, wherever you're catching us from. Um, let us pray so we can continue together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. Thank you that our lives are going to be transformed forever for the glory and honor of your name. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the month of October, we've been talking about the art of following. And we've, we've explored different um, aspects of following. Um, I remember it came from the scripture in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. Uh, we are studying about the life of Jesus. And now Jesus is an example of us. Not just an example for us to be amazed, but an example of us, of how our lives should be. And so as we are studying that, um, uh, we, we went through the book of Matthew, and we are currently at chapter 4. Um, this might be one of the last episodes for that particular series of Jesus being an example of us. And as we read about Jesus' life in Matthew chapter 4 verse 18, we realize that J the Bible says that and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The Bible says they immediately left their nets and followed him. The Bible says, going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and immediately they left their boat, they left the boat and, and their father and followed him. And so we are seeing that in this portion of the scripture, Jesus finds fishermen, people fishing, people going about their business. And he realizes that um, he, he, he decides that this, he chooses these people uh, to be the people that he's going to work with to build the foundation of the Jesus movement that is still running until today, the foundation of the church. And when he's choosing them, the statement he tells them, the Bible says, he said to them, follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. And and from this, we realize that Jesus didn't tell them to, he didn't tell them, come with me to a university and I'll teach you how to become fishers of men. He didn't tell them, come with me into my political party and I'll teach you how to become fishers of men. He didn't tell them, come with me and I'll give you, I don't know, 300 books, 356 books for you to read a book every day and I'll make you become fishers of men. Uh, he told them, come follow me. It is in the following of Jesus that they became what God predestined them to become. Following is the greatest form of learning. It is the greatest form of learning. It is the best way you can learn something. That's how children are able to learn quickly. That's how children are able to pick up things quickly. It is just by following. Um, I, and so I have a two-year, a one-year-old daughter who is just learning to walk uh, and, and uh, to stand and walk. She doesn't want to stay down on the floor because all her life, the few months she's been on earth, she's probably looking at people walking all the time. And she's like, but what am I doing down here? And so she kept trying and trying and trying and trying. Until one time she could stand on her feet, now she walks. But she doesn't just want to walk, she wants to run so fast. Because she's trying to imitate those that she is following, the parents. It is the quickest way to become. And uh, as, as we explored the different aspects of following, oh by the way, um, you can't claim, like I told you some time, you can't claim to say you're following God if you don't follow a person. Because God sends us people to follow. Paul writes and says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. 
every if God wants to do something in your life, he will send a person that you can follow. And we explored that in the previous episodes. And I remember also telling you that if the enemy won't be able to destroy you, he will slow you down. And one of the ways the enemy slows us down is by turning us into innovators, is by turning us into people that choose self-made people. You know, we are in a generation where being self-made seems to be a cool thing. I can tell you it's cool, a cool thing for the generation, but it's not a cool thing for God. It's not a cool thing for kingdom people. And the Bible tells us not to be conformed to the standards of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Most people um, sort of like have adulation for people who say, I am self-made. I've done this myself. Do it yourself. Be your man. Be your this. Be. You see, all those things are not in the Bible. Because anyway, if you're following yourself, then you've already arrived. Yeah, because you have yourself with you. You can never do anything beyond yourself. Even the people who say they are self-made, they are not really self-made. There is no one on earth who is self-made. Everyone learns something from someone. It's the way God has designed the world. And so Jesus tells these guys, follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. And I get the sense that as you're watching, I know the Holy Spirit is convicting you to allow yourself to follow someone. Following involves humility. You cannot follow if you're not humble. Because you're following a person and people come with all their baggages. There is no perfect person on earth. <clears throat> and that's how God has designed it. Because in the end, what you want to follow, as you follow that person, you want to follow the Christ in them. You want to follow them as they follow Christ. Yeah, you want to imitate them as they imitate Christ. And that is what Jesus tells his disciples um, in, 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 in this portion of the scripture. And last week I was telling you because we can talk about following and following and following. And you're probably asking yourself, okay, I want to follow. I found a person to follow. What should I follow? And Paul gives us a clue in the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, chapter 2 Timothy chapter 3 which we started um, on last week but we'll continue with it today we'll finish it today and then next week we'll start on a different series so it says but you have carefully 2 Timothy 3 10 to 12 it says but you have carefully followed my doctrine my manner of life purpose faith long suffering Love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So, he's, so Paul is writing to his son Timothy, and he's telling Timothy, he, he sort of like lists down the things that Timothy has followed. And last week, I remember we talked about following doctrine, following someone's doctrine. Now the person you listen to the most is the person you're following. The person whose words you esteem is the person you're actually following. That as you follow a person, hear their words. Hear what they are saying. Hear their interpretation of the scriptures. Listen to their messages. Watch what they are telling you because then that is how you are following the person. And this week, I us talk about the second thing he mentions, which is the manner of life. So Jesus, so Paul talks about um, following doctrine and then following the manner of life. Manner of life maybe would be the way of life. Um, let me read another version. Mm-hmm. Amplified says, uh, now you have diligently followed my example, my example, and then list the, 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 the rendering here is that you followed my example. That is my example, my teaching, my conduct, my purpose, faith, patience, love, steadfastness. 
So conduct. When you're following a person, you're not just following what they are saying, but you're observing their ways. You're observing how they do different things. You're, ob- you, you're not waiting. You know you can follow to a level where you are not waiting for a person to say something. But by observing their lives, you immediately receive instruction. And that is a higher degree of following. So actually, a person who is progressing as a good follower, they just need to observe. They don't need to be told, do this. Um, You just need to observe what time does the person wake up, for example. If the person you're following wakes up at 4 a.m. every day, you see, you, can, you don't need to wait for them to tell you that you should wake up at 4 a.m. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to wake up at 4 a.m. If the person you're following prays two hours a day, you don't need to wait for them to tell you to pray two hours a day. You just begin praying two hours a day. It is a higher degree of following where you're, uh, where you're observing a person and you are not just waiting for them to tell you. Let me read for you what... Uh, The writer of Acts says in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, he says, The former account I made of Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. So so Luke, in writing the book of Acts, he's telling Theophilus that the things I'm writing for you are the things that Jesus did that we observed him doing but also the things that Jesus taught. So Luke, as a disciple, was not only hearing what Jesus was saying. Luke, as a disciple, was observing everything that Jesus was doing. I guess it is from that place that the disciples actually observe him praying and they tell Jesus, Ah, man, Lord, teach us to pray. Because they've observed him doing something that they desire to do as followers. They are telling him, teach us to pray. So one of the things that you need to, that we need to embrace as followers is the aspect of following the conduct, the manner of life. Becoming a student of a person observing everything that they do and learning to emulate them bit by bit in their lives. That if the person you're following is a preacher of the gospel, you don't need to wait for them to tell you, get online, begin preaching. No, you begin preaching. If the person you are following is married, Mm? They didn't just get a girl and just disappear with the girl without wedding her properly, without having a covenant with her. You, You can't claim you're following them if you're doing something contrary to what they did. You just do the same. You go get the girl, marry the girl, and then you go and have sex with her because that is the order of the Bible. And thankfully, the Bible has not just been left on the pages, but there are people who are emulating the Bible. There are people who are walking the life in the word of God, but we need to be following and emulating. So you follow someone's conduct, someone's manner of life, someone's way of life. Back to my scripture says you have carefully carefully followed my doctrine manner of life my way of life how do i how, how did the person get married how has the person made money are they lazy are they working and how long are they working And you see, and this applies to both the one who is following and the one who is being followed. Because one day you're going to be followed if you're not yet being followed. There are people that are looking up to you and they can't just follow your words. They need to follow your your way of life, your conduct. You know, you you don't reproduce what you say. You reproduce who you are. You reproduce who you are. So I know I'm addressing the aspect of following someone, but let me also address the aspect of you 
being followed. That you are being followed. That there are people looking up to you. That there are people thinking about patterning, pattern, pattern, patterning their lives after you. That you are a pattern they observe. That you are an episode they read. That by watching you do certain things, is if you understand that there are people following you, it will automatically cut you off certain behaviors. You will desire to live a certain kind of life for the sake of the people who are following you. So he talks about the manner of life, the conduct. He talks about purpose. You're following my purpose. If you're following someone, it's important to know why do these people why, why does this person live? Like you can't claim to be following a politician and you're not in politics. You can't claim to be following a footballer and you're not a footballer. Because then you are supposed to follow their purpose. You can't claim to be following a billionaire and your goal in life is to stay broke. And you can't claim to be following Jesus and you're not participating in the church. Can you imagine Jesus telling his disciples, follow me and I'll make you become fishers of men. And they come and tell him, no, 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 no. For us, we'll follow you, but we only want the aspect of making money. We don't want anything to do with the church. You think they would still be followers of Jesus? Not at all. So you follow the person's purpose. What on earth are they here for? What are they trying to achieve? The person I follow, who is Apostle Moses Mukisa of Worship Harvest Ministries, is, is into church planting. And making disciples, making disciples, church planting, evangelism, discipleship, church planting. That is what he's into. Guess what I'm into? Evangelism, disciple making, church planting. Yeah. So you follow a person's purpose. You follow a person's faith. That is the other thing is, he says. You follow the faith of a person. If a person is believing for 20 million disciples... In their lifetime. Your faith can't be me I'm believing for only 100. No. Your faith needs to also rise up to that level. So you're following a person's faith. How do they believe? That's why Jesus wrote and said, he told his disciples that the things that I have done, okay, you will do also. And greater things than these you will do. He actually expected them to believe more, to have a greater faith than he did or to have faith as he had to do greater things than he did so faith you follow a person's faith huh. now there is there are these other aspects that they mention here because sometimes we like the fruit of who people are but want to pick and choose what we will follow we don't want to follow certain hmm, not bad things and i'm not telling you to follow the things that are carnal that are not godly in a person but you know, there are certain things. For example, here it says long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, <laughs> afflictions. So it's, it, Paul is telling Timothy that in following me, the things that have happened to me, some of them might happen to you. And when they happen to you, I need you to know that you're following me and it's okay. You know, Jesus' disciples, they were, most of them were killed. Only one person, I think, died a natural death. Who is, who is John? The rest, they were killed for their faith. Do you know what? The person they were following was killed and persecuted for his faith. That is Jesus. And so they ended up following suit. You don't just pick and choose. Just I just want to follow the good things. But when persecution comes, you're like, no, 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 no. I'm no longer a follower. No. You follow. You are a hard follower through and through. And I'm not saying that you go and follow. I, I have to make it clear. If, a, if the person you're following does something that is not of the Bible, that is not godly, I, I, I'm not saying follow that. No. I'm saying if it happens that they are persecuted for the gospel, because that's what Paul is talking about here. If it happens that, for example, as you're following them, maybe at one time because they were believers, they were chased out of home. Or something happened to them and they were being persecuted by their relatives or by their friends or by their what. Or they've had to let go of certain luxuries in life. 
like having certain drinks that have a certain percentage of OH to them. If it involves you doing such a thing, then you must be willing to do it. Because as you follow, like I've said, you follow a person's doctrine, their teaching, you follow their way of life, their conduct, you follow their purposes, what are the things that they live for? And so you follow the purpose, um, you follow their faith, what do they believe for? You follow their patience, how long are they willing to wait until the promises of God are fulfilled? You follow their love. How deeply do they love? You follow their steadfastness, their persecution, and their suffering. And as a follower, as a person being followed, these are the things that the people who follow you look out for. And so these are the things you should look out for. What is your teaching? What is your purpose? What is your faith? What is your conduct? What is your love? What does your love look like? How steadfast are you? Yeah. So in following, those are some of the practical things that you can follow. And I know Jesus is inviting us to follow. Jesus is inviting you to follow someone. And you don't get to choose who you follow. God chooses them for you. The disciples never chose Jesus. Jesus chose them. You never chose God. God chose you. You never chose your pastor. Your God chose your pastor for you. You never chose... Anyone you follow, ideally you don't choose them. God chooses them for you and somehow he makes things happen that land you into their space so that you can follow them. So someone you need to trust God's choice and you need to give your heart to follow the person because they will make you become. Thank you so much for tuning in for Elevate today. Today will be the end of our following uh, conversation for now. I know it might come back at some point. But for the month of October, we just wanted to dig into following. So if, if, you, if you have questions about following, again, put them in the chat. We'll be able to interact a bit with the questions so we can be able to answer them. But I'd like to invite you to follow Jesus. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I'd like you to, to invite you to follow Jesus because it's the best decision you'll ever make. And I'd like you to say this prayer with me. I'd like you to say, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I give my life to you. I believe that you are the son of God and that you are raised from the dead. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Do something significant in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are born again. Welcome to the family of God. And I would like to, <clears throat> like to invite you to contact us on that number on the screen so we can plug you into a family so we can follow Jesus together. God bless you so much. Thank you for tuning in. See you again next week. Next week, we are going to start on a new series. And I know it's going to change your life. Um, just watch out for it. We'll do it for all of November. And then we'll, we'll rest a bit in December as we gear up for the new year. God bless you. You are loved.